Are you on here? Hang on a minute. They've all gone. And they've left me the keys. I've got an idea. Oi! Cheers, Nikki. Now, to electrify, we know that there is one car that has really captured your imagination in 2021, and it is this, the Kia EV6. And guess what? I got the keys to this prototype. I'm really very excited about driving this car. And what you're gonna get is my raw, unfiltered first take, because I literally haven't seen it in the metal until around 20 minutes ago. I haven't sat inside it yet, and I certainly haven't driven it yet. So we're going to discover it together, because you never get a second chance to make a good first impression, right? Okay, you ready? Come with me. Let's test the new Kia EV6 together. But before we get to that, please do tell us what your first impressions are of this new next generation electric Kia in the comments below. And of course, do all the clicks on the relevant buttons so you know when our next video hits the internet. So come on, what do you think? I mean, the EV6 is certainly different to what we're used to with some pure electric Kias. The few complaints about the excellent, but maybe a little bland e-Nero were exactly that. It just isn't unique and interesting enough, but you can't say that Kia has played it safe here. So the EV6 is actually the sister car to Hyundai's Ioniq 5 and the forthcoming Genesis GV60. Both five seat super hatch SUV type things that seem to have slightly broken the internet by being both gloriously distinctive and full of very useful tech, which bodes well for this, doesn't it? And just like the Ionic 5, the EV6 is a lot bigger than the pictures might suggest. Okay, I know I'm not exactly tall, but what looks like a medium-sized hatchback when you see it on your phone or your laptop feels way bigger when you're standing next to it. And that's in all directions, length, width and height. This is not a small car. You know what, where the Ionic is quite square and very angular, the EV6 definitely feels swoopier. I think there's more Jaguar I-Pace in this car than 80s hot hatch. And in my book, that is a very, very good thing. It looks great. In fact, it looks quite aggressive from the front. Look at those eyes and the wheel arches. It's a bit muscular. I really do like the kicked up window line and also the roof line with the kind of little wings at the roof. Although when it gets around to the back, well, let's just say it divides opinion. Once again, what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. But overall, this is interesting and fun. It isn't just another bland lookalike, and I'm all for that. Right then, let's get comfy in here, shall we? Um, first thing I notice is that the seats are really comfortable, a good size, nice headrests, plenty of electric adjustment. Just seems quite easy to get a comfortable driving position. The seats are actually made from material and vegan leather, which feels like normal pleather to me. Um, you see this stripy stuff here on the dash? That's made from apparently 107 recycled plastic bottles. A lot of thought went into this. Oh, there is, however, when I look through the mirror and over my shoulder, quite a big blind spot back there. But the thing that really gets my attention is that where the Ionic 5 felt like a big spacious lounge, the EV6 feels, I don't know, I guess a more engaging feel. Feels like you're being cosseted by the car. I suppose it feels a bit more like a driver's car. Uh, and the big news straight away is this curved um, screen here in front of me, one half of which is touch screen, and the other half has got all the driving info on it looks great and it's actually incredibly intuitive and easy to use you know you've got to remember that the Koreans are incredibly good at tech and it really comes across in the interface here ah down here you've actually got physical buttons for the climate control which I love and if I flick on this you get a second screen where you can easily access all the things you want when you're on the go. Um, got to bear in mind that this is a prototype, so some of the stuff isn't working fully yet, but I think it bodes well. It's a really easy system to use. I find it interesting there's no flat floor between the seats, even though this is a bespoke electric car. It's a conscious decision to put this central section in, and I like it. Houses the drive selector, the starter button, 
It's all very, I guess, ergonomic, space efficient, makes it feel a bit more like a cockpit in here. Another thing I really like is this charging pad. It's right next to you. Put your phone in there, out of the way. It's all very sensibly thought out, very practical. Generally, it looks and feels very high quality in here, and it has a very different vibe to the Ionic 5. They may be twins, but they are most definitely non-identical twins. As for general space, well, it's pretty much as you might expect. Plenty of room up front, generous in the back, though a bit darker and more closed in than the Ionic 5, with a boot that's just a little bit smaller and slightly less practical. And this sporty roof line looks great, but it does mean it's a bit trickier to carry things like large dogs and wardrobes compared to the square-backed SUVs and estates that are out there. Ah, oh, and there's a handy good size frunk too, but it's not for the big stuff. When it comes to charging, the EV6 has that absolutely brilliant 800 volt charging system that allows for super fast charging when you're out and about. Stick it on a really big charger and the EV6 can run from 10 to 80% of charge in just 18 minutes. A 50 kilowatt charger will see the same in just over an hour and flat to fall on a typical home wall box will take 12 and a half hours. It will also take 11 kilowatt AC charging if you have it. So pretty much the best charging currently on offer without buying a Porsche Taycan or an Audi e-tron GT. But despite that brilliant charging capability, this is my favourite thing about the EV6 charging port. Thanks to some clever tech, you can plug in a variety of electrical items into it. Some people might go for a substandard microwave and a ready meal, but for me, being northern, I like nothing better than sitting by the roadside, having a brew and a really nice plate of biscuits. Hey, anyone? Right, first impressions again. Well, it's worth saying straight away that this car is, of course, a prototype because, as I said, some of the electronics aren't 100% finished. It's also a slightly strange mixture of specs, but it's pretty much there, so it gives me a good idea. It's immediately, the ride does feel really comfortable. The steering feels nicely weighted at low speeds like this. There's not a massive amount of information about what the wheels are doing. Now, I am aware of the car size right from the off, particularly on roads like this. Now, this, as I said, it's an early car. It's a bit of a, a mishmash of specs. It's a GT line. It's got two motors to give it all-wheel drive, and it's also got 321 brake horsepower, which is plenty despite its size. It means it can hit 0 to 62 in just over 5.4 seconds, which is pretty perky. Top speed is 115 miles per hour. What I'm actually more interested in is how this car feels. And it does feel pretty good. The practical stuff is well catered for. You've got usual brake regeneration from paddles here behind the wheel. There you go, that beep that it's on. Um, and you can set it for gentle deceleration or proper one pedal driving. Now you can choose from three different driving modes just down here on the steering wheel. You've got Sport, Normal and Eco. They do all the usual things like just shutting up on the throttle. You can really feel that there in Sport. Give a bit of weight to the steering. Increases that fake noise, which I'm becoming increasingly fond of. Something I never thought I'd say. But you know what? Normal mode does work well enough. Um, I guess I would say it does feel a little bit heavy, which is no surprise because it does weigh over two tonnes. And yeah, even driving it at these relatively slow speeds through the bends, um, it does feel quite engaging to drive. Definitely sportier than the Ionic 5. I think what's really interesting is that despite the fact that the hardware is very similar between the Ionic and the EV6, they do feel like different beasts. And I come back to that point that I make quite a lot, which is that people said, oh, electric cars will all feel the same to drive. But these two definitely don't. I know it's in the tuning of the electronics, but what really matters to me is that this car has a character of its own. It's not a sports car, but it's definitely sporty and sportier than the Ionic 5. Got it there now in, put it back into sport mode. And on a road like this, which has got some really nice, gentle, swoopy bends, feels really balanced, quite controlled, just enough weight to the steering wheel. I mean, first impressions, I'm really impressed with it. 
And anyway, there's a version coming soon called the GT, which will have 577 brake horsepower, which will be the properly fast one. It will also be priced at £65,000, which does seem a little bit steep, but I imagine it's going to be a lot of fun to drive. Probably can hear there's quite a lot of binging and banging and bonging going on from all the uh, safety systems, which oh, can get a little bit annoying. Uh, particularly, there's another one, if your name is Wookie, aka Tom Ford, he really doesn't like them. So I would like to point out to you, Mr. Ford, that they are relatively easy to turn off. There's a little button here on the steering wheel. You press that down and off they go. And you get silence on your way. Oh, okay, didn't work. Let's try that again. No, that didn't work either. Okay, they're there for a reason. It's to make sure that we're safe when we're driving. So I'm going to leave them on. <laughs> But there is a way to deactivate them um, if you do want to do. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've got it out on a dual carriageway now and it is really comfortable. Nice steady ride, not too many lumps and bumps um, feeding back into the cabin. Relatively quiet in here as well. But overall, I mean, this is a very quick first drive, but it was really impressing me. They've put a lot of thought and attention into making this um, feel a bit more like a driver's car and also some really lovely things so when you indicate uh, you need to turn you get that view of the camera just down there showing you the side of the road as for pricing for the more sensible options well there are four versions they're all well equipped and in the uk they all get a rather nice big 77.4 kilowatt hour battery now you can have rear or four wheel drive in different outputs and prices range from just under £41,000 for the current cheapest model to just under £52,000 for the range topper that we have here. They all get over 300 miles of range and come really well equipped as standard. All of them get that really quick 800 volt charging system and big screens inside. And the current UK based car, the EV6, gets the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, 19 inch alloy wheels, heated front seats and wheel, full LED lighting. The more expensive versions add things like fold flat relaxation front seats, sort of swedish seat material, bigger wheels, electronic suspension and a big sunroof. But to be honest, even the base model does look pretty good. So what are my first impressions and yours? Uh, well, we're actually in a place where cars from Korea are back in front when it comes to electric. In fact, the first mainstream electric car I really fell in love with was the Kia Soul EV. And I think this is a car that is also going to steal my heart when I get to know it a bit better. I think it pushes the boundaries in terms of styling and provides that class leading range and charging capability that has become a real calling card for Hyundai and Kia. The Ioniq 5 and the EV6 start to make pretty much everyone else that one step behind, which is bad news for all the other car makers. But for car buyers like us, it's very good news indeed. Cheers to that. Thank you.